Okay, so um, in this video we're going to look at the next kind of type of question and it's all to do with linear uh, acceleration, it's all to do with those equations we've been doing, but it's a specific type of problem where you're looking at collision time and overtaking time. So we know we have our UVAST equations and there's three of them and let's just look at what these equations mean first of all and, and how they're useful. So let's say you had some object that starts with an initial velocity of 3 meters per second in this direction. So it moves off to the right with a velocity of 3 meters per second. It has an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. What these equations do is they let us know what its velocity would be at any time along this trip. So what's its velocity going to be after 4 seconds? What's its velocity going to be after 8 seconds? What's its velocity going to be after 12 seconds? We know because its initial velocity was 3 meters per second and because it's accelerating, it's going to be getting faster. But the first equation here, v equals u plus at, what it allows us to do is to find its velocity at any time along its journey. So v equals 3, which is its initial velocity, plus 2 times t. So what we have here is we have an equation which we can plug in any value of t that we want and it will give us its velocity at that time. Similar with equation two or three here, s equals ut plus a half at squared, s equals three is its initial velocity times t plus a half two t squared, s equals three t plus t squared. So what that does is we can plug in any value of t that we want, 4 seconds, 8 seconds, 12 seconds, 100 seconds, and we can figure out the distance that it has travelled. So that's how these equations are kind of useful, and I'm sure you've kind of copped that already. But just kind of, I just wanted to go over it before we look at the next couple of questions. So here's a nice kind of easy question to kind of ease us into this topic. We have two cars and they're travelling in the same direction, side by side, and they pass the traffic light simultaneously. So car A, and I always do a little diagram, is traveling at 10 meters per second. So initial velocity for car A is 10 meters per second. And it has an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. So car A is moving off in this direction. Car B is passing the traffic lights at the same time. So I'm drawing it here, but let's say that's where the traffic lights are, that's the road. So car B is passing that with a speed of 20 meters per second and its acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. So car B heads off like that. So you can kind of visualize what's going to happen here hopefully and, and, and it's good to kind of think about what's going to happen logically before you look at the equations. They both pass the traffic lights at the same time but B is going a lot faster. So B is going to go move ahead. It's going to move ahead and get further and further away from A. Both of them are accelerating, but A is accelerating at a faster rate. So let's say after five seconds, B will have a velocity of 30 meters per second. But after five seconds, A will have a velocity of 25 meters per second. So after five seconds, B is still moving faster, but you'll notice that A is starting to catch up a was 10 meters per second behind B speed initially, and now it's only 5 meters per second behind B speed. So eventually A is going to get faster, and once A gets faster, it's going to start to catch up on B. So that's just kind of understanding what's happening. Let's look at the actual question. Part 1. Write the velocity of each car at time t. So when they word this like at time t, it means that you don't actually know the value of t, you're leaving t as an unknown. So for a, well we know the equation for velocity is v equals u plus at. So the velocity of a will be a's initial velocity, which is 10, plus a's acceleration, which is 3, times t. So that's the velocity of a at time t. And you can use that equation to find a's velocity at any given time. The velocity of B then would be its initial velocity, which is 20, plus its acceleration, which is 2, times T. Now that's the velocity of B. So that's part 1 done. Write, the dis in, ter write in terms of T the distance travelled by each car. 
So part one's over here. Part two then. Well, our distance equation is s equals ut plus a half at squared. So for s a, it's going to be its initial velocity, which is 10 times t, plus a half its acceleration, which is 3 t squared. So for s a, we'll simplify that down further. It'll be 10 t plus 1.5 t squared, or 3 over 2, whatever you prefer, you could leave it as, as t over 2 if you wanted. For b then, sorry, sb is going to be its initial velocity, which is 20, times t, plus a half its acceleration, which is 2, times t squared, which equals 20t plus t squared. So that's our equation for B's di or A's distance at any time, and that's our equation for B's distance at any time. So that's the first. Um, that's the first uh, two parts of the question answered. Now, hence, find the time at which they are traveling at the same speed. So here's where we start using the equations. We want to know when the velocity of A is the same as the velocity of B. So that's how we write that mathematically. When is the velocity of A the same as the velocity of B? Now we have an equation for the velocity of A and we have an equation for the velocity of B, so we're going to use them to solve this. The velocity of A at any time is given by 10 plus 3t, and the velocity of B at any time is given by 20 plus 2t. So when does this equation equal this equation? And now we just solve for t. So take away 10 from this side and 10 from this side, they cancel. Minus 2t from this side, minus 2t from this side, they will cancel. And we're left with t equals 10 seconds. So there's a really easy and quick and clever way to figure out when the velocity of A is the same as the velocity of B after 10 seconds. So that is, uh, where's my mouse gone? That is this question answered. When are they side by side again? Now again, you might want to think about this. So they both start off at the traffic lights, which is here. B shoots off ahead of A because B is moving faster, gets further and further away, but because A is accelerating quicker at a greater rate, A is eventually going to catch up. So when are they side by side again? Well, hopefully you can see that they're side by side again when the distance covered by A from here to here is the same as the distance covered by b from here to here. So we just pretty much do the same thing. We say, well, they're side by side again when sa equals sb. Our equation for sa is, sorry to scroll around, this isn't great, 10t plus 1.5t squared. So 10t plus 1.5t squared equals the equation for sb, or the displacement of b, 20t plus t squared. Now, because we have a t in every term, we can divide across by t. And if we divide across by t, that t will cancel, that will cancel, that will cancel, and that will cancel. So we're left with 10 plus 1.5t equals 20 plus t. Um, I'm going to take away 10 from this side and take away 10 from this side. And so I'm going to take away t from this side, t from this side, they cancel. And we're left at 1.5t minus t is 0.5t equals 20 minus 10 is 10. Divide by both sides by 0.5, t equals 20 seconds. So that's your answer to part two. So hopefully uh, all that makes sense to you. So it, it's fairly easy, but it's just making sure you know where to start at. Now they can re or word it slightly differently. And when they word it slightly differently, you do exactly the same thing. It's just the wording is obviously different. Um, so you just have to be able to identify it. So let's look at this question as another example. A car starts from rest at point P. So remember point P can be here. And it's starting from rest, so u equals 0 meters per second. And it moves with an acceleration of a equals 4 meters per second squared. So it heads off in this direction with that acceleration. 
as it as it starts, so just at the same time it's leaving here, let's call this car A, another car, let's call it B, passes P as well, so it passes this line, but it already has a velocity and it has a uniform speed of 20 meters per second. Now because its speed is uniform, we do not use the UVAST equations. We use the equation speed equals distance over time, or the better way to write it is V equals S over T, velocity equals S over T. Sometimes you see that written as U because its initial speed never changes, so it's just an initial speed all the time. At what time will overtaking occur and how far from P? So at what time will overtaking occur? Um, first of all, you have to think about, well, when is overtaking going to happen? Well, car B is moving at 20 meters per second, so that's going to shoot off ahead. Car, B, uh, car A is not moving initially, so it's going to be behind. It's going to have to catch up. But because A is accelerating, eventually it's going to be moving faster than B. It's going to start to catch up on B, and eventually it's going to overtake it. When they overtake, we can say that the distance covered by A is the same as the distance covered by B because they're overtaking at that time. So that's how we're going to find out at what time they're overtaking. So let's do our equation for S of A, ut plus a half at squared equals zero times t plus a half four t squared, which equals 2t squared. Our equation for s of b, now because sb is moving at a constant speed, we're going to use the equation, this equation over here, rearranged, to give us u times t. So it's speed which is 20 times t. They'll overtake when the distance covered by a is the same as the distance covered by b, so that's when 2t squared equals 20t. Divide across by t, this t cancels with this, so 2t equals 20 t equals 10 seconds. So that's the time that they will overtake. The question then is how far from P? So just to finish that off, how far from P? Well, we just need to pick one of the cars. So I'm going to pick car B because it's easier. The distance B travels in 20 seconds would be its velocity times time. So its velocity is 20. And the time taken to overtake, sorry, is 10 seconds. So it will have covered 200 meters. Okay, so make sure you're happy with those two questions, and I'm going to give you a couple similar to that to try for homework.